If you want to understand human nature, there's no better source than Spinoza, in my opinion. Uh, his ethics include five sections. Sections three and four particularly are concerned with human behavior. And he doesn't pull any punches. I think the only person who comes near to Spinoza in this respect is probably Nietzsche. But then again, Nietzsche considered that he was a follow-on from Spinoza. He really liked Spinoza. Uh, he was fairly harsh about him in some places, but overall he just saw himself as a continuation of Spinoza's philosophy. Now, <coughs> the title of this is Why People Are Boring. Uh, Spinoza goes right for the jugular. And the ethics is composed of five sections. Each section has an, uh, quite a few propositions in it. It varies in number. Uh, but prop Proposition 55 in Part 3 of the Ethics is a real gem. And in fact, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the whole extract of that proposition on my Patreon channel, which you can download for free. You don't have to pay anything. Just uh, There's a link underneath. Just go there and you can download it. It's worth reading. Yeah, in this podcast, I can't convey the whole meaning of that uh, uh, proposition. But go and read it and study it and you'll find that what's in there is largely true, embarrassingly true. So, you, you need quite a bit of background to understand the full significance of what Spinoza is saying here. And on the Patreon channel there are about 200 and something, or 100 and something I think it is, uh, podcasts on Spinoza. Anyway, let's get to the uh, to the point. So, in this Proposition 55, Spinoza says, Everyone is eager to tell of his exploits and to boast of his strength, both of body and mind, and for this reason men bore one another. Now, <coughs> you can secretly admit it to yourself that most of your social interactions and other kinds, which I'll get to in a moment, are boring. Now, if you're a rabid extrovert and you like telling people what you've been doing and what you're going to do and what you've got and what you haven't got and all the rest of it, then you will be the one doing the boring because you won't let other people get a word in edgeways. But generally speaking, for your average human being, ranging from the most introvert to moderately extrovert, you will find most interactions with other human beings boring. Why? Well, he's telling us here why. It's because everyone else is going to boast of the strength of both body and mind. In other words, what they've got, what they've done, where they've been, you know, all that kind of stuff, the stuff that will bore the pants off you. They might even show you their holiday photographs which is truly the most boring thing that anyone else can do to another person. Uh, Facebook is full of it. You know, here's my cat being cute. Oh, you know, tick a like because you don't want to offend them, but really, you know, who gives a shit? Or here's my our visit to this lovely restaurant, or here's our lovely vacation. You know, tick, tick the like on it. You know, who, who gives a shit where these people have been? You want to do your boasting, so you put your photographs up of this amazing vacation that you've been on. <coughs> anyway, let's go through some areas of life where this boredom uh, crops up. So in business, you will find, if you, d if you deal with business people, and I'm talking typically of business managers, and that may not be your domain, but you should know that it's not a domain you particularly want to get into. Because these people are typically de-skilled and all they are doing basically is pushing other people around and that gives them a little bit of power. Uh, they maybe get a pay rise and they get on the uh, wannabe uh, treadmill. So, you go out with some business colleagues, what are they going to do? They're going to start boasting about their pay rise, about their um, new... Uh, business car, new company car, the uh, new parking space, the new business cars, you know, whatever it is, uh, the golfing holiday they've been on, blah, blah, blah. This is what they do. 
And the higher up the ranks you get, the worse it gets because they start boasting about their second holiday home or their um, uh, little yacht they've got or something. Boasting of strength, of strength, both of body and mind. This is what they do. It's boasting. Why do people do this? Well, as I say, there's a lot of background that you'd need to fully appreciate the dynamics of all of this, but the basic dynamic goes something like this. Everybody's after power. It's just the way it is. Nietzsche's will to power. Um, the canatus is the, a word that Spinoza uses. Everybody's after power. They, even the most insipid person is after power and they found that being insipid is the best way for them to get power. So everybody's after power. So what are they going to do? Well, here's the formula. If you portray yourself as being strong, other people will feel weaker. If other people portray themselves as being strong, you will feel weaker. That's the horrible, nasty little dynamic of most social interaction. Not all. Mercifully, not all. There are people who know about this kind of thing and try to avoid it. In other words, have some real dialogue with someone else which means listening to them, each one trying to listen to what the other is saying. But it's a very rare thing. So, I've covered business. Most social occasions, well, again, you know, it depends what kind of social group you mix in, but if you're in some kind of middle class, and middle class means different in the UK to what it does in America, but middle class is typically professional class, maybe business management, that kind of thing. Social occasions are bragging occasions. Everyone is eager to tell of their exploits and to boast of their strength, both of body and mind. For this reason, they bore one another. So, my son has just got in at a very pres prestigious uh, school or university or something. Uh, oh, we've just bought our second holiday home. Oh, we're going to go to the Caribbean to do this, that, or the other. Um, oh, we're just having a you know, amazingly expensive kitchen fitted in the house. Blah, blah, blah. And the people do this because there's this nasty little thing going on. Of the more they display their power, the less power you will feel you have. They're pissing on you. <laughs> and of course you won't want to miss out, so you'll do the same. And that's why these occasions very often are very unpleasant. You know, it's, it doesn't matter what layer of society you look at, this kind of thing will be going on. So in a bar, you know, some guy will be wanting to show that he's tougher and more attractive and whatever than another guy. It may end up with a fight. <coughs> it's the same thing. Some female will be wanting to show that she's more <coughs> attractive, has greater sexual appeal and all the rest of it than another one. Uh, it really doesn't matter where you look, this thing is always going on, and that's why social occasions in, in the main are pretty boring. This will happen with your peers at work. One will be boasting about the promotion he's going to get, another one will be promoting about the new company car he's got, another one will be boasting about um, the new laptop that he's going to get, or something, you know, anything to boast about to increase their power, to try and convince you that they have some better thing going on than you have. And so-called friends do it. You know, I've really covered the things that happen, but you know, your friends will boast about this, that and the other. And worst of all, in many, well in some instances, is family, because families are always looking for uh, a pecking order. So one member of your family will be the golden child or another member of your family will have a better job than everybody else and this kind of thing goes on in families and it's fairly ugly because you typically anyway people feel obliged to mix with their uh, family members but even so this kind of stuff is going on and we can't leave out spiritual people <laughs> spiritual um, my wife was once um, involved in what was called a Dharma combat. 
She said it was pathetic. <laughs> it was one group of spiritual people trying to show that they had more wisdom and knowledge than another group of spiritual people. Dharma combat, remember that. <coughs> Uh, but it happens in more mundane ways. You know, somebody at the local church gets to uh, be responsible for the flowers or something and they feel that that makes them superior to everybody else that's in the congregation or something like that. It's the same game over and over and over again. Don't think you can move to any area of life where this is not happening from so-called spiritual communities down to your local bar where people hang out to um, find sexual partners. It's the same thing happening. Anyway, <coughs> this proposition goes on to say quite a few things. So here's another one, another little gem, because what's going to happen if somebody's saying to you, well I've just got a new Mercedes-Benz company car, we're going on holiday to the Seychelles, my son's just got in a, a prestigious university, my wife is, you know, whatever. Um, you may become envious. In fact, not may, you almost certainly will become envious. And as far as Spinoza is concerned, envy and hatred are the driving passions of society. <laughs> this is what makes most of society tick. It's what motivates a lot of people. So he says, men are by nature envious. Note that, he's not saying may be envious, or in some circumstances are envious, he's saying men are by nature envious. That is, they rejoice at the weakness of their fellows. Now that's horrible, isn't it? But you've done it, I've done it, everybody you know will do it. And in fact, when that person you know is bragging to you about whatever it is they've done, they will take some pleasure if you cannot respond in a um, in a way that equals their own things they're bragging about. They will take pleasure in your weakness. Horrible. It's you know, another name for it is Schadenfreude. But Spinoza doesn't use that word. He's using the uh, term envy. So men are by nature envious. That is, they rejoice at the weakness of their fellows and are pained at their accomplishments. When somebody's telling you that they've just got a promotion and they've just got a brand new car and they're going on some fantastic holiday, that will cause you pain because it makes you feel diminished compared with them. So, as a direct carry-on from this whole thing of people boasting, you get envy and people end up hating each other. <laughs> Does it sound familiar? If you're at least bit honest with yourself, you will know that all of this is very, very true. Anyway, finally, <coughs> I would love to have gone through the whole thing, but it would just take too long. But here's another extract. He will, on the other hand, feel pain if he thinks of his actions as inferior. Well, I've kind of covered that, but you've whatever. Um, you've just bought a house with a third of an acre. And then you meet your mate Joe and he tells you, oh, I've just bought a house and it's got a whole acre. Well, you'll, f you'll, f you'll feel inferior because that's the whole aim of Joe telling you that he's got a one acre and you've only got a third of an acre. So he will, on the other hand, feel pain if he thinks of his actions as inferior compared with the actions of others. This pain he will endeavour to remove by wrongly interpreting the actions of his fellows. So when Joe tell you, tells you that he's got a whole acre, you'll just say to yourself, yeah, it's an acre, but it's an acre of fucking scrubland. Or, yeah. And it doesn't matter whether it is or isn't. You will try to misconstrue, misconstrue what Joe has said to make yourself feel better. Or, you know, who wants a fucking acre? Who, an acre? Who wants to look after that much land? So this pain you will endeavour to remove by wrongly interpreting the actions of his fellows or by embellishing his own as much as he can. Now you find this in the workplace, you find it in ordinary social interaction, you find it in business, you find it with friends, family, spiritual people, 
Oh, I've been to two uh, ayahuasca retreats. Yes, well, I went to the ayahuasca retreat with the global ayahuasca um, um, superstar. You know, the, 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 the leading guru on ayahuasca. Yeah, well, I went to two. Me, you know, and it goes on. And you embellish what you've done to try and impress other people. Well, it's more than impressing to make them feel diminished. And when somebody tells you something that kind of um, outbids what you've done, then you will put a wrong interpretation on what they're saying, just to make yourself feel better. And this is the way the whole thing works. The net result is that people find each other boring. Now, you might have thought that it was just you that found the whole thing boring, but it isn't just you. It's the basic dynamics of human interaction that we bore each other. So, you need never think again that being bored by your social company is in some way an unusual event. It isn't. It's the norm. That's the way these things are. And if you want to avoid that kind of thing, then just find some intelligent people if you can. They're, fi they're hard to find. Find some intelligent people or just avoid people. But as I said at the beginning, if you are a rabid extrovert, none of this will impact on you whatsoever. Because you will just blag and blag and blag until people are fainting in front of you. Out of boredom and you will be the cause of the boredom. So, here's the, here's the rule. If you are not bored, you are boring other people. So, bear that in mind.